with the National Harm Reduction Coalition. I'm here with Donald Davis from the Kentucky Harm Reduction Coalition. We're in DC and we just came from a panel on the intersection between opioids, HIV, and hepatitis C, organized by Politico and sponsored by Gilead Sciences. And the big news coming out of the panel was that uh, Greg Alton from Gilead announced that they were making a strategic investment in the greater Appalachian region, which they are listing as five states, West Virginia, Kentucky, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Indiana. And this investment is intended to strengthen and expand the harm reduction infrastructure and hepatitis C prevention. And they announced that Harm Reduction Coalition, the national group, is going to be the lead organization to move that work forward. So what that means is that we're going to be working with community partners like Donald in those five states offering a range of technical assistance, holding some convenings, coming up with some robust statewide harm reduction strategies, and then ultimately this fall we'll be granting money to build out the programs, the infrastructure, the outreach and education in those five states, and hopefully make a real impact in a deeper way in what harm reduction and services for people who use drugs look like that could ultimately move us towards eliminating hepatitis C. Donald, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Rainer. Glad to be here. Yeah. So, Donald, what did you think of the panel this morning? I thought the panel uh, answered some really good questions. The uh, questions that were asked were um, questions that uh, needed answering, and um, it was it was I thought it was really good. I thought it was very comprehensive. The answer and the people who were on it were, were were knowledgeable of what's going on in the country and in their particular states. Yeah, so the panel had our executive director, Monique Tula, who's actually behind the camera right now, <laughs> as well as Terrence Moore, the acting executive director of NASTAD, the National Alliance of State and Territorial AIDS Directors, a longtime partner of ours, uh, Angie Settle from West Virginia, who runs a federally qualified health center in Charleston, and Dr. Hughes Melton, who is with the state of Virginia. Um, so a lot of relevant perspectives on what's often been a neglected issue. We hear a lot about the opioid crisis. We hear a lot about overdose. What we don't hear as much about is the downstream consequences that as more people are injecting drugs, more of them are getting hepatitis C. And as we saw in Indiana a few years ago or Northern Kentucky not that long ago, in some cases that's leading to clusters of new HIV cases amongst people who inject drugs. And that hasn't really been on a lot of people's radar screens. Right. Why do you think that is? Well, I, I, I think that it hasn't been on their radar screens because they're kind of ignoring the fact that people are injecting. Uh, they know that they're injecting, but they don't want to spend money to um, start syringe exchanges. They don't, uh, they're not spending money on any type of uh, wraparound services for people who are injecting. And so um, the, the stigma behind injecting drugs has carried over into the, um, the let you know the, the governmental part of uh, the the, uh, the states. So yeah. sort of see no evil. See no evil, uh, you know, and and the fact that um, a lot of those states are they're they're conservative states, and so uh, they don't they don't look at they look at um, drug use as not a disease, but you know they're weak people. Who mm -hmm. use drugs, and that they don't need to be, use drugs, so uh, they're not putting a lot of time into it. And then, if, when they do have money for hepatitis C, like it was said on the panel today, that it's underfunded. It's been underfunded for years. Uh, I've seen them take money from hepatitis C grants and shift it over to HIV grants. Mm -hmm. And so, the funding for hepatitis C hasn't been where it should be. So, and the hepatitis C, because of the stigma that you're talking about. Everybody's focus is, well, we won't have to worry about that if we just get people to stop using drugs. Correct. And so all the pieces that we care about from a harm reduction point of view around drug user health, around that holistic uh, care, wellness, safety, support, right. have been missing responses. Right. Yes. Now, Donald, we knew each other when you were working in harm reduction up in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, and then you moved to Louisville. How are things different? Um, in doing syringe exchange, doing harm reduction work in Kentucky compared to your previous experiences up north? 
Well, I started in, in um, Ann Arbor, Michigan, yeah. doing syringe exchange and, and harm reduction. I moved to New York and was there for 10 years. And the difference is between night, like night and day. Um, the, uh, the syringe exchange program didn't start in the state of Kentucky until after the outbreak of the HIV in Austin, Indiana. And um, it, it, the way the bill is set up, it has to be go through the health department. And the health department will run it. So some health departments in smaller counties are only open maybe one day a week or two days a week for just a couple of hours. Uh, in Louisville, because Louisville is, 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 is a large metropolitan area, they, uh, they understand, they you do needs-based harm reduction and syringe exchange. So uh, they, they contracted Volunteers of America to do the suburban and near rural areas, okay? Mm -hmm. And the difference is, you know, I just couldn't understand why um, they weren't doing any type of harm reduction when I got there because Lou, uh, Kentucky is a leader in hepatitis C infection and it's also a leader in overdose. So uh, they were doing nothing about it until this outbreak happened. So, you know, they, they, they just ignored it, kind of. And that it wasn't happening, but it is going on. And the one difference is like, um, working in New York, I, mean, I was working in Harlem in the South Bronx, and you know, people of color and, 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 and uh, Hispanics, and then I, when I come here, it's not in, it's basically not in the urban area. It's in the urban area, but the rural areas are more affected here than any, you know, than you would say like in New York. And with the, the differences in what, what they're putting in the drugs today, uh, people are injecting on average in New York maybe four or five times a day. Here, it's 10 to 15 times, but not, if not more, because they're putting fent fentanyl in all the heroin here. Fentanyl is in the methamphetamine here. Mm -hmm. And they're beginning to put fentanyl in cocaine. So the, the, you know, the time that you're high is less. So you're, they're feeling sick in, in 20 minutes, so they're injecting again. So it's, it's, a, it's a big difference. And I was, you know, I was taken aback by the number of times that people are injecting every day. What's something that's been rewarding or gratifying for you to uh, bring your harm reduction background into a state that's relatively new to harm reduction? I, I think the most rewarding thing was um, when I met uh, Russ Reed and mm -hmm. Arlene Rice, mm -hmm. and we, two people that thought the way I thought about harm reduction, uh, Arlene had lost her son to overdose, and Russ is um, the uh, executive director of Beacon House, a men's recovery center, and we started and formed the Kentucky Harm Reduction Coalition. And we do that, we started it to do uh, naloxone training and distribution. And we started in Louisville, we've expanded through uh, all of Louisville, Jefferson County, and the surrounding counties, and um, Southwest Michigan, I mean, um, <laughs> Kentucky, <laughs> Southwest yeah. Kentucky. So we, we're, we're expanding, and um, the, the, the one thing that I, I appreciate is that people are beginning to understand about, about overdose. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm an advocate that everybody should carry a, a, a naloxone kit and that every business that has a, has a public bathroom should have, their staff should be trained to use naloxone. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a work in, in progress right there, getting businesses to, to understand that. But we're getting, we have it in the libraries now. It's not in the public schools, but it is in the Catholic schools. So we've been able to, you know, we've been able to break some barriers with it. Wow, the and Catholic schools. Yeah, the Catholic schools. Oh, how'd you in. do that? We've trained, we've trained their staff. We've uh, and uh, the, all of the whole diocese of of, Kentucky, of Louisville has naloxone, mm. but we we're still working with JCPS to try to get us, let us have them let us come in and, and um, train their teachers and to leave naloxone there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So the broader recognition of the overdose problem has been an avenue to start having different conversations about harm reduction. Right. And, that's the, and for Kentucky, that was the, the main start. We didn't talk about hepatitis C, we talked about overdose first. Uh, one day I was at my uh, syringe exchange site, my first day at this particular site, and this woman came by to ask, well, what are you guys doing? And I told her, they thought we were giving out you know, cell phones. But um, I thought we were doing syringe exchange. Oh, really, they did. Um, and a couple, one guy came by, Obama, Obama, but Obama phone, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, no, no. But I, uh, the woman came by and said, "What are you guys doing?" I said, "Well, we're the syringe exchange." What you give? I said, "We give clean syringes to people who inject drugs, and 
Well, just let them die. So well, I can't do that. Mm. So we're trying to reduce the spread of HIV and hepatitis C. And she was pretty, she was pretty kind of arrogant. And, and then when I said we're trying to prevent it, HIV and hepatitis C, she says, oh, my mother has hepatitis C. Mm. And it took, it took so much. And Daniel knows me that I just usually just let stuff fall out of my mouth. But it took a lot for me not to ask her, how'd your mama get it? Mm. You know? And she said, I'll be back. She never came back. Mm. Hopefully she went home and asked her mother how she got her hepatitis C, you know? And um, people were looking at that, and then um, that's when the hepatitis C talk came with for me. But it basically, it was overdose here because there were so many people dying from overdose. You know, I mean, at one time, when I got here, Kentucky was number two in the nation in overdose. Mm -hmm. I think they're number three or four. So they stay in the top five. Mm -hmm. So uh, what the Harm Reduction Coalition does, uh, we put a fentanyl test strip in all of our kits. Uh, we come to Volunteers of America. When I'm at a, at a syringe chain site, someone from the Harm Reduction Coalition is there doing the naloxone training and distribution. And when they're not there, I give out fentanyl test strips to our participants just to, 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 to test their drugs. Yeah. You know, you've spoken about your own personal experience mm -hmm. with hepatitis C. What's the What's the stigma like? What are the barriers to care like that that the people that you work with now are facing around hepatitis C? Well, you know, my particip the, the participants that come to the the, the uh, exchange, uh, they don't worry too much about HIV. Oh, I, not, you know, I'll, I'll take a Hep C test, and then they get tested, and there there are very few doctors. At one time, there were doctors that wouldn't treat them because they were using. They were actively using, so they wouldn't even treat them. Mm -hmm. uh, they would say, well, when you stop using, come see me. Now we have the um, University of Louisville's Hepatitis Clinic. We have two doctors there that are, we can make a referral. My, uh, the person that does our testing, she has a personal connection with them because they cured her of her hepatitis C. So she does the testing. If they test reactive, then she will get on the phone and call and set up an appointment for them. And 50% of the people she set up appointments for have gone to those appointments. So I think we're doing really good in that, in that part. Getting people there, making the appointment for them right then and there, and them going on their own there. If we had a patient navigator, the navigator could pick them up, or the, I don't think they would, I don't know if they would want to go that day, but they could make an appointment with them and pick them up and take them there. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm, I'm looking at trying to do with our, with our hep, hep C testing and with our syringe shape. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one more question. So as the National Harm Reduction Coalition is moving forward with this broader Hep Connect initiative and building deeper ties with people in these five states and uh, helping to figure out how to best support the great work that's happening and the work that needs to happen, what advice do you have for us? Understand the state, understand the politics in the state, understand the people that you want to work with, and those are the main things right there. The politics in the state are the most important. Understand that the, the, the state level politics and the local politics. You gotta do that or, you, or you're gonna have trouble. No helicoptering in as experts from the coasts. No. <laughs> no, I mean, come in quietly, mm -hmm. sit down with them, let them explain to them what you want to do, mm -hmm. uh, the benefits of what you're doing, mm -hmm. and um, the majority of them will understand. Mm -hmm. The more majority of them will understand. Then you look at your community-based agencies that you feel are qualified to do the work. Mm -hmm. Not just because of political reasons or anything mm -hmm. like that, but the people who are qualified and who will do the work the way it should be done. You know, mm -hmm. use peers to do work. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that I mean the peer programs in New York are excellent, mm -hmm. and they've expanded that over to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So um, more peers and agencies that are willing to do the work the way it's supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Great words, bringing us back to core harm reduction principles, meeting people where they're at, and elevating the people's lived experience in all aspects of planning, policy, and program development. Correct. Thanks, Donald. You're and welcome. to learn more about, uh, follow our work with the Hep Connect initiative,
check out our website, check out our social media, sign up for our email list. We'll have lots of exciting announcements coming up. And whether you are working or living in one of those states or interested in following along to see what you can bring to your state, we'll have a lot to share and we are counting on everybody's uh, engagement and support to make this a collective endeavor. So thanks everybody. Thank you.